Um, okay. Okay, and, and next. There's oh, two sorry. of us talking, <laughs> yeah. by there the way. There are two of us okay. talking. Myself and David Gordon. Not sure. Let me try something. One moment. And I would suggest to pin David because he is the one with the presentation. Let me try pinning you both and see how it goes. Go ahead, Matthew, introduce them with their title and then okay. we'll go. All right, this is University of Wyoming, Space Cowboys Eclipse Outreach in Wyoming and beyond. So with that, um, we'll turn it over to you guys. All right, can you see the slideshow? Yep. All right, wonderful. Uh, hello, thank you for coming to our talk. Uh, my name is David Gordon. I'm from Gillette, Wyoming. I'm a physics and astronomy major and a student lead for our team. And in my free time, uh, I like to ski. And my name is Amelia Myers. I am also an astronomy and physics double major. I'm from Snohomish, Washington. I'm an outreach and telescope lead on our team. And a fun fact about me, I'm a rugby player here at UYO. Uh, we are a part of the University of Wyoming's atmospheric science team, the Space Cowboys. Our team has had a lot of different backgrounds, personalities, and majors, including chemical, computer, and mechanical engineering, astronomy and physics, statistics, and anthropology. Amelia and I will be discussing the various lessons we've learned through our previous outreach events and what we will bring to future projects. One of our first outreach events was a balloon launch that took place on September 14th at the University of Wyoming campus in Laramie. This launch allowed us to talk to higher education levels than our other outreach events would. This would prove useful as it let our team talk in far more detail about what we were researching, as most of the people that came up to us had experience in STEM fields, including a couple of atmospheric science majors. This experience would greatly help us understand what we needed, what we needed to do for the Eclipse campaign. During the Eclipse campaign, several people came to our launch site to ask about what we were doing. This included people from all age groups, but most notably high school age students took an interest in our work. With high schoolers, we were able to go a little more in depth with what exactly we were studying along with why and how we were doing it. We also found that high schoolers were only interested in what we were doing if they came up to us. Nobody likes being dragged into lessons or presentations they don't find interesting. And this is especially true for high school age students. Along with high schoolers, the campaign gave us a chance to speak to a younger audience as well. In the days leading up to the eclipse, we spoke to seven middle school classes, which consisted of three eighth grade classes and four sixth grade classes about what eclipses are, how they work, and other details about them. These classes went extremely well, despite us only having about a day to plan, practice, and prepare for it. Even though they went smoothly, we did learn some very valuable lessons from them. While teaching these classes, we figured out that we don't really need to dumb down any concepts for younger kids. Some concepts may be a little too difficult for certain ages, but for the most part, kids are smarter than we give them credit for. We were able to extensively discuss general relativity to sixth graders in a way that they understood and even asked questions about. This pretty clearly shows that you can talk to kids about almost anything so long as you don't treat them as less. Due to time constraints, we did have to take out a few sections of our presentation for the sixth grade class, which ended up working well for what they were learning in class. Making a modular lesson plan for scenarios like this is also extremely helpful, as we were able to take out certain parts due to time constraints without losing the overall value of the presentation. Our main participation section was a physics problem that calculated the area of totality of the eclipse. For the older students that had more time, we simply gave them the numbers and wrote down the equations they needed on the board. For the younger students with less time, we gave them the radius of the shadow of the moon and let them figure out the area of the shadow by themselves. While this was our main area of participation, it was by no means the only opportunity we gave for interaction. Several students were extremely interested in what we had to say. There was plenty of participation in class without prompt, much prompting from us. If participation was dying down, however, we found that having free stuff to give out as an award for asking or answering questions, helping with demonstrations, or otherwise joining in was a great way to increase engagement. The things we used included temporary tattoos, stickers, and patches of the NASA logo, which were given to us by the Wyoming Space Grant Consortium. Other things could be given out as well for prizes for participation. 
For both grades, we used models for our demonstration. We had a two inch diameter foam ball for the moon and an eight inch diameter foam ball for the earth. Using this real model allowed us to physically demonstrate the distance between the earth and the moon, as well as discuss how far away the sun is on this scale. This proved to be exceedingly useful for our presentation since it helped students visualize what we were talking about. Once the eclipse campaign was wrapped up, we started doing outreach with the local area. With all the knowledge we had gained in Richfield, it was time to see if our findings had held true for other outreach events. In November 2023, David and I got to participate in a balloon launch for, for a robotics team based in Cheyenne, Wyoming. This launch was in collaboration with the Wyoming Space Grant Consortium, who allowed us to fly a radio sonde so we could gain extra practice for the April eclipse. Both David and I have done other balloon launches with the WSGC. However, these were done with just general science classes. This meant that there were, few, there were just a few students who weren't interested in what we were doing. But this was not the case for the robotics team in Cheyenne. Because our audience was composed of students who were interested in STEM, participation was significantly higher than previous launches. The Cheyenne robotics team launch also allowed us to employ a tactic we had learned in Richfield, keeping the complexity of the science. The students would ask questions about software, data, tracking, interpretation. All of these questions were expanded upon without skipping over the science behind each component. We found that when students are engaged, they don't have a problem asking more questions to further their understanding. In December 2023, we did another launch with the WSGC at the Laramie Montessori School. Once again, we were given the opportunity to fly a radio sound along with a payload created by Laramie Montessori. However, due to weather issues, we only ended up launching the radio sound. This outreach event taught us that while we have our backup plans for the campaigns, we also need backup plans for outreach events. We have a secondary launch date after the April eclipse where we will not only be launching a balloon, but also speaking to the elementary students. With all this knowledge gained by trial and error, we are now confident in our ability to keep students engaged during the outreach events we have planned for our April campaign. For the April total eclipse, our group is traveling to Bluffton, Ohio, in the nearby town of Lima, Ohio, we plan on conducting outreach at the South Science and Technology Magnet School. South Science is a K-8 school focused on teaching science and technology. We plan on meeting with grades 5 through 7, as it was learned in Richfield that students who are around this age range are more likely to participate and find our presentation fun rather than boring. We're also targeting the science adjacent school since we learned at the Cheyenne launch that having a STEM-based audience means we're more likely to have student interest. Now, we don't know the prior knowledge that the students hold, which is why we plan to ask teachers ahead of time if they think students will be able to complete the activities we have. If a student thinks the activity is too hard for the majority of the students, we use our backup plan. We generally have two to three different activities on hand that can be tailored to the student's prior knowledge. By sugarcoating topics, students have a difficult time understanding the science. Science is difficult to understand, but if a child is engaged in having fun, they will ask questions to further their knowledge. Having models and demonstrations that preserve the complexity of science gives kids the chance to find what they like to do. We have found numerous successful ways to keep students excited and engaged with our outreach presentations. It's important to find an audience that will stay interested and engaged. It's important to structure presentations to fit anyone's understanding. It's important to offer rewards for participation. And it's most important to maintain the full complexity of the concepts discussed. All of these tips have been used numerous times in outreach the Space Cowboys have conducted, and they have all performed extremely well. When conducting your own outreach, if you're worried about student engagement, try to hand out stickers for students who ask or answer questions. If you're worried about the logistics of the activity you've created, make sure the activity has been structured to allow for changes if needed or better yet, have a backup plan. And if you're worried that students won't understand the material you talk about, don't be. Preserve science, expand on topics that could be confusing to a younger audience, allow students to ask questions. Believe me, they will ask questions. And believe me, everyone will be happy that you took the time to talk about those nitty gritty de details. Thank you. All right. Perfect. Uh, and I appreciate the Cowboy Bebop reference uh, at the end too. So um, any questions? All 
Uh, Angela has a question here. Uh, were you engaged in outreach before joining NEBP? I was personally not. Uh, no, this is mostly um, through the Wyoming Space Grant. Um, we are lucky enough that the Wyoming Space Grant has invited our NEBB team to do outreach with them. So that's where a lot of that came from. Okay. And uh, there's a comment here from Rachel. Uh, love the idea of allowing students to show what they know. Don't underestimate students, especially young students, ability and fondness for learning the fancy words. Uh, any other questions or comments that people have? Was all of your outreach okay. was all of your outreach before the eclipses, or were you doing some outreach during the eclipse event? For instance, the annual eclipse. David, do you want to answer that one? Yeah, yeah. So we did a couple of launches before the eclipse. Uh, both for a little bit of practice and a little bit of outreach. But then during the eclipse, we had two teams, like a day crew and a night crew. And both Amelia and I were part of the night crew. So while the day crew was launching, we were out of school talking. That's where... That's where... Uh, these pictures come from. Was... That was during the eclipse campaign, just when we weren't the ones launching. So when did you sleep? <laughs> um, not very uh, much. <laughs> <laughs> um, also, uh, Rachel had another comment in there that uh, if you ever want to bounce outreach ideas off of her, uh, this is Rachel from St. Cloud uh, State um uh, she's happy to to help with that as well too and uh, as a note to everyone she's even offered to open that up to anyone here on the conference so sounds good all Thank right you. any any other questions or comments all right uh, if not, yeah, great job. Uh, thank you so much for your presentation and um, thank you. Okay, and that